In molti hanno analizzato la crisi dell'eurozona come una crisi della bilancia dei pagamenti e in particolare delle partite correnti. In una sua risposta di un po' di tempo fa a Sergio Cesaratto, lei ha sostenuto che non è così. Che crisi è, secondo lei, quella che i paesi dell'eurozona stanno affrontando? Many economists analyzed the eurozone crisis as a balance of payment crisis and especially related to current account imbalances. In a reply to Sergio Cesaratto, you asserted that this is wrong. In your opinion, what is the nature of the crisis that Eurozone countries are facing? Again, uh, there are a couple of ways to go about answering this. One is that, like the United States, uh, your financial system blew up, okay? Uh, your economies became financialized in the same way that ours are became financialized. So there is a financial crisis. And the financial crisis uh, is severe in the United States and even more severe in Europe. Uh, uh, Warren Mosler back in the 1990s wrote that the Euro project was doomed, and this is something MMT has always argued, the Euro project was doomed. And he said the thing that's going to trigger the crisis is going to be a financial crisis in the banking system and the problem is individual euro nations cannot resolve their banking crisis and you have no central authority that's going to do it for you. Now it turned out that that was right. The financial crisis was the trigger of the euro crisis, okay? So if you want to point your finger, what is it? A financial crisis triggered your crisis. A financial crisis also triggered the United States crisis. It was a problem in the banking sector. Okay, now what's the difference? In the United States, Uncle Sam is responsible for our banking system, Washington. Okay, and Washington is a sovereign government. It issues its own currency. The problem is that Italy is not any longer a sovereign currency issuer. Neither is Greece, neither is Spain, and so on. You don't have Uncle Sam standing behind you. You have the ECB. The problem is the ECB was not supposed to bail out your banks when you get in trouble. Each individual member nation is responsible for your own banks. So you did not have a way to react to the financial crisis in a way that would, uh, I won't say resolve it because we haven't resolved ours yet, but we stepped in, we bailed them out, and we propped them back up. And you're having much more trouble doing that because you have to rely on the ECB, which is not supposed to do this, okay? So those are differences in the way that the financial crisis affects your economy and in the way that you could respond to those. So that's, that's just the trigger though, okay? In Europe, you have the other problem, which is that you don't have a fiscal policy that can be undertaken in response to not just financial crises, but also to unemployment crises um, in Europe because you gave up your own currencies. You have a European Parliament whose total budget is less than 1% of GDP of Euroland. We have Uncle Sam, a federal government budget that is above 20% of GDP. It's very easy for Washington to deal with unemployment problems. I'm not saying that we do do it. I'm just saying we can do it. We have the fiscal capacity to do it. Italy does not have the fiscal capacity. So even if your government was willing to try to deal with the unemployment problem, Italy actually can't do it on its own. So that's a problem. Now let's look at the, the current account, so-called imbalances. In the first place, there's no such thing as an imbalance. It's impossible. Balances, balance. Your deficits equal the surpluses of other nations. They're in balance, okay? How do you do this? You do it by issuing Euro-denominated debt, okay? And in the United States, we have many states, we have 50 states in the United States, okay? We have a monetary union, it's called the dollar. All of the states in the United States use the dollar, issue debts in dollars. Among those 50 states, I don't know how many, but a lot of those run current account deficits year after year after year, probably for 250 years. 
They've been running current account deficits. Does anyone know? No. Does anyone care? No. We're all in a currency union. How do we make up for that? With fiscal transfers from Washington. Okay? We run current account deficits across many United States states year after year after year. It does not cause any crisis whatsoever. Okay? Do we have states that are poorer than others? Yes, we do. Okay? Have we adequately dealt with that problem? No, we haven't. But we can deal with it. And we deal with it much better than Europe does because Uncle Sam has 20% of GDP. The European Union does some distribution. And I've spent time in Sicily. I've seen some of the European projects. But they distribute less than 1% of GDP around Euroland. So this is the fundamental problem. You, um, you redistribute Euro reserves among the nation states in, in the target two. And this is why a country like Greece can run current account deficits year after year after year because they're covered by a reverse flow of reserves. As long as target two operates, in fact, the current account deficits don't lead to any financial problems by themselves. They do, the current account deficits do reflect unemployment problems, okay? And so the, the problem in Greece really was not that they can't continue to finance their current account deficits. They do this through Target 2. So the ECB is sitting there uh, lending reserves to the countries that are losing reserves through current account deficits, okay? So you have problems, but it is really not the, the flow of the finances. Then the, the final thing to say is that we know from Wynne Godley there are these sectoral balances. And when we look at Euroland, what we tend to find is that <clears throat> there are countries with current account deficits. Because of the sectoral balances, we know that the sum of the foreign account, the domestic private account, and the domestic government's account must be in balance for every uh, nation. And a country that runs a current account deficit like Greece is going to have to have either a government deficit or a private sector deficit equal to that. And so because of these sectoral balances, you can have your private sector and more heavily indebted or your government sector more and more heavily indebted. And eventually markets start to react to that. In the case of the United States, our government sector can run a deficit continually year after year, markets will never react to that because they know there's no solvency risk. But that's not true in the case of members of the European Monetary Union. There is a chance of default or a chance of exiting the, the euro, in which case the markets will lose. So there is a real danger of a default. And that is why there's a difference between, say, a Greece and a um, Louisiana in the United States. Louisiana is not going to leave the dollar union. Greece might.